I am Jeffrey Villardouin in the contest between the stainless steel historical improvement project and titanium submods. They're both submods of stainless steel itself, a total conversion mod of Medieval 2 Total War Kingdoms. In this episode, I will repeat in the historical improvement project the Citadel Siege I tested last time with the titanium submod. We have again a Citadel under attack by six Eastern factions defended by a Kingdom of Jerusalem army and the odds are again 3 to 1 in favor of the attackers. So this time there's no Khwarezm, the campaign starts at 1146 so there's no Khwarezm Kingdom at this point. So the first faction is the Abbasid Caliphate that you see here. There are a lot more different units in the stainless steel historical improvement project compared to titanium. Titanium uses um, the uh, basic units one finds in uh, stainless steel, but in the historical improvement project there are a lot of units um, that have uh, come from Broken Crescent. They have been further remodeled and uh, these are the units we see here. There are also some units from stainless steel, but they have also very often been remodeled. And so we see here the various units. I'm not going to go over them. There are various heavy spearmen, there's heavy cavalry. You also saw some marker horses there. Very nice. There are some units we've seen before, uh, like these Turkish uh, looking units, but they have been further remodeled. You see they have these over garments, they look uh, somewhat more realistic. We have these mix and match uh, units here, you see they remind a little bit of the Persian spearmen or something like that. We have uh, these cumin like unit here. And uh, the units, even when they are from uh, Broken Crescent, they have been very often remodeled. So that was uh, a Golem unit that has been dismounted and slightly remodeled. Here, this is a Golem unit. This is a standard Golem unit that we also find in stainless steel, the unmoded version. Here's another unit influenced by various styles from various mods. And I do believe by now we moved on to the next faction. I'm not quite so sure what, which faction was the next faction. I think this is Egypt. We saw some Askari horsemen there from Broken Crescent. There are some Nafatun here. There are some uh, very nice archers behind them with heavy armor and uh, you see the uh, Bedouins have been um, uh, reconfigured here they have now blue style uh, garments rather than the usual yellow and orange and red they are now bluish a lot of them have faded colors this is actually one of the things that we find in um, the historical improvement project a lot of the units that have bright colors in other mods here they have faded colors, brownish, dark, darkish, kind of faded black or faded blue type colors and so on. They look like an army that's been on campaign and the colors have been washed out. And you see the units are actually very nice. There are various types of spearmen and so on. They have some partial armor. You can see little bits of armor, I uh, think the sleeves and so on. Uh, here are some golems. I think we're still uh, with Egypt here. The Ayyubids. And here are some more golems. These have been introduced from Broken Crescent. Sometimes, like, they have, there were archers and be given lances and so on. Here, I think these are now possibly the Turks, or are they still Egypt? I think they're still Egypt. The Turks at this period had uh, Arabic writing, so it's hard to tell from the writing whether they're Turks or not. And uh, here are some beautiful uh, armored archers, some cataphract 
lancers of some kind. These look uh, partly the Chorasm, the Chorasm Golems, but maybe they have been given to another faction. And now probably we moved over to the Moors. I think we're uh, with the Moors now. So we have these um, Camel Archers, these Camel Riders. Again, they have bluish covers. Blue is not the most um, popular color among Muslims. So you won't find it on any Muslim flag, but in any case, in some of the mods in the Medieval 2 Total War games we find blue. So this is the Christian Guard. You see the Christian Guard has been molded. It's not the vanilla type Christian Guard. And over here on the right uh, there are some uh, basic uh, Moorish spearmen. They are militia sort of types. They're not ultralight but they're not especially heavy. Here are our familiar Saracen, uh, mercenary Saracens. This is one of my favorite best looking units in any Total War game. They were introduced, I think, in stainless steel. And the bluish type uh, Bedouin uh, spearmen. Over here, it looks like we have uh, the general's bodyguard of the Moors. It has a different type of bodyguard, doesn't have golems, doesn't have a Christian guard. Some more uh, moors here in Bedouin overalls on horses, some spearmen, some swordsmen of the Turkish type, some heavy armored spearmen. Here these are from uh, stainless steel, possibly slightly molded. I'm not sure if it was Lifthrasher or who it was, but there's been a mix mixing and matching of the units. So here we have um, come to the uh, Cumans. The Cumans are from uh, Rushichi Total War. I don't know if they have been sort of meddled in any way, if there have been any slight changes. There may have been. Possibly they have some pouches that I think have been added for this um, sub mod. They are not from Rushichi. Possibly some of the bluish colors here on uh, the saddles. There are probably a few touches that were not uh, in the original models that have been added for the historical improvement project. And uh, here we have those wonderful looking uh, Cuman lancers with the wonderful horses. I'm not sure if these are marker horses. I think they may be. And this is a very interesting unit. So these are golems and they have dark colors but not quite black as if it was black and faded out. I quite like the look of this unit. And they have been charged by the St. Lazarus Knights like in the previous battle we saw. So we're just repeating almost everything as in the previous battle just to get an idea. One of the St. Lazarus Knights has been stuck and uh, one St. Lazarus Knight I think died in the charge and so now the St. Lazarus Knights charge again. The second charge was not very good. They were very spread out, they were not very well organized. They have nearly wiped out this unit of golems like they did before. But they have already suffered some casualties. I think by now they lost three or four horsemen. This is the rest of the Abbasid army. It's getting organized. Like in the previous battle, this battle also uses the Germanicus um, real bad battle AI. And so it is also the same battle AI. So this is another wonderful Where? unit. It's partially battle, based on stainless steel, but it has been molded. It looks very nice. It's nice to have this greater variety uh, in this uh, sub mod. Just as much as I like the a very orderly and professional look of the units in Titanium, so I equally m like just as much the more varied and uh, worn out style of the units in uh, the Historical Improvement Project. So here are back to the uh, Crusaders, so we had some uh, heavy spearmen here. Here we have the uh, St. Lazarus Knights dismounted. Uh, the uh, same uh, t 
template longbowmen we saw before. We have laid stakes, uh, sharpened stakes here at the gate of the inner keep. Here are some crusader uh, spearmen or templar spearmen. Some uh, crusader knights over here. Uh, they have slightly modified the skins. We have some uh, dismounted uh, knights as well, Templar knights. Here's the general's bodyguard. The general's bodyguard is different. Uh, they have uh, blue horse caparisons, various changes. And so here are some Lazarus knights are attacking these very heavy uh, axemen, Abbasid axemen, suicidal charges against axemen, especially heavy axemen. Are suicidal so even these very uh, heavy uh, knights these very elite knights were destroyed by charging a group of double-handed axemen there it's like charging uh, pikemen and so now they have routed they're going to the keep and here the uh, Cumans have entered from one of the side gates one important difference between the two some mods is that in the historical improvement project the gates are very easy to break down. Uh, they break down about twice as fast. And so that means that the attackers can get into a citadel faster and can go through the uh, layers of the walls faster than they were doing in titanium. So they're making faster progress. And uh, they're bringing in uh, various siege rams. Another big difference between the Samoas, from my point of view, is that at least in custom battles, I haven't checked in the campaign, but at least in custom battles, you cannot get catapults in the historical improvement project. So here there are various units. There was some Hashishim, here some heavy spearmen that are guarding the gate, just in case someone comes in unobserved. And we saw some uh, Bedouin types earlier. So these are the heavy uh, spearmen, armored spearmen. They were also in the standard version of stainless steel. We also saw them in titanium. They were possibly slightly molded. I think they had like um, longer armor, longer body armor. Uh, the ones we saw. And here's our general's bodyguard. Uh, they are. Um, trying to escape they're gone into the keep they have been guarding one of the gates but um, the enemy is already in through the first layer of walls and so they are going now into the keep through the sharpened stakes so they have to ride very slowly very carefully through the sharpened stakes on the ground are the bodies of the routed St. Lazarus Knights the enemy's ram has breached the gates and uh, our enemy has broken through the gate of the second layer of the walls. So the um, eastern factions are going through the walls very, very fast. Because the gates are very easy to break down in this sub mode. So our enemy now is going through the second layer of walls. And we only have the uh, inner keep left to us. So here are some of those wonderful Cuman units from uh, Roshichi. I have the feeling uh, that every single unit, even if it looks like it's from Roshichi or Broken Crescent, has been slightly molded. And even the ones that look like vanilla, I think nearly all, maybe not all, but nearly all have been, this, they've been retouched in some little way at least. So here we have some Cuman archers, they are carrying these ladders. They are approaching the inner keep. Our long bowmen are shooting arrows from the distance. Uh, they also brought some uh, bowmen here, but the bowmen are being decimated. Our long bowmen are hitting this unit, uh, and we're about to fire now with our mangonels. We're also firing flaming arrows. We have to break this unit. So the AI is using an interesting tactic. It's sending in the siege uh, uh, engines. Those very siege things first. Keeping the army behind. If we didn't have stakes at the gate, we had more cavalry, you could have charged them. But because we have sharpened stakes at the inner keep gate, we stay out of trouble. And here a very accurate 
uh, very accurate mangonel shot obliterated that unit that was bringing in the ladders so they have dropped the ladders and they're running for their lives and so now uh, the enemy is bringing siege rams bringing more ladders more interesting looking units of the various factions I think the Abbasids are the best looking faction from this mode among the eastern factions if we accept perhaps the Cumans if you like that look but among the pure Saracen factions I think the Abbasids probably are the best looking have more the most colorful and interesting looking units probably so our uh, mangonels keep shooting they're missing for the most part those two mangonel shots almost completely missed they got some of these guys about half a dozen maybe more about a dozen here died from that mangonel shot that exploded in the sky this very very nice uh, units bring the ladders it looks very lit some kind of heavy armored spearmen and they look slightly Byzantine or slightly Persian and these uh, Turkish like types they also have these drapes over the armor that's very interesting also these uh, Saracen types here very interesting very very units it's nice to have this greater variety and sometimes they have this tendency you know you see some colors that look a little bit faded out as if they've been on campaign the colors got kind of faded out and the clothing got worn out you know, that sort of thing it's quite a nice look a nice approach a very different approach to the units we saw in um, titanium So finally one of the siege rams has approached the gate of the inner keep. Our longbowmen do everything they can to slow down the progress of the siege rams. We're also shooting with our mangonels. We've broken that unit, they have abandoned the uh, siege ram, but one of the siege rams is nearly at the gate now, and uh, so the uh, enemy infantry is now approaching. Uh, they are preparing to enter the keep. The gate will fall uh, very quickly, but look at the wonderful variety of units. There are horsemen with horse caparisons, there are cataphract horsemen, there are these uh, Saracen types here, they're uh, more traditional looking Hashashim, these uh, Bedouins with the blue overalls, these guys with the uh, uh, sort of fabrics and the clothing hanging over the armor different types of comparisons different types of colors a lot more variety than uh, most other ones the enemy are battering down our gates so one uh, of the siege rams has reached the gate i have a feeling it has been abandoned but another siege ram is now approaching uh, the gate of the inner keep here bunch of those uh, beautiful mercenary Saracens a blue flag that's the first ever Islamic blue flag seems to have some kind of jihad type writing on it Oh, and uh, that was a great hit from our mangonels. It uh, wiped out nearly an entire unit of uh, heavy horsemen. And if a uh, mangonel shot landed here, it would be devastating. So a unit of axemen seems has been routed. Axemen, double-handed axemen are usually elite. So it's interesting to see we've routed an elite unit. We keep shooting with our mangonels and we keep shooting flaming arrows at them to try and uh, break their morale. 
Here are the Christian Guard or the Moors, they're going to the left. More units are coming closer. That Langwin was shot, completely missed. More mercenary Saracens, more Bedouins running about, another Mangonel shot that completely missed. More interesting horse caparisons. One guy here got killed by an arrow. And here are those Templar longbowmen. I have a feeling even these have been slightly modified. Is it just my impression that the original ones did not have so much red on them? So it seems that uh, Siege Ram is banging out the gate. It hasn't, uh, the crew hasn't routed, but it has a very small crew. It's very hard to route. Another Mangonel shot. Completely missed. Nobody was killed. And another Mangonel shot. Completely missed. The, uh, the Germanicus Rehobard AI spreads out the units and positions them, positions them in such a way that it is very hard to kill them with Magnol shots and so on. Okay, this Magnol shot was more successful. And this one probably caused some casualties, probably not many. Possibly not any. Our long bowmen keep firing flaming arrows. Hopefully that's affecting the morale of our enemy, and our enemy has broken through the gate. And now they're all rushing in, in a big uh, gate-crashing exercise. And the first units of our enemy are now through the gate, and the fighting is about to begin. So we have the sharpened stakes here. Unfortunately, we don't have a catapult. I don't know what's best, uh, to have a catapult or to have sharpened stakes. I think sharpened stakes cannot be laid down by the AI. It never lays down sharpened stakes in defense. So I wonder if it's a good idea to have them. Uh, what's the plan? But anyway, so we have them. We don't have a catapult. We have at least the sharpened stakes. We have uh, some uh, St. Lazarus knights dismounted here on the right. They are hopefully lowering the morale of the enemy. And uh, some of the enemy horsemen charge in. A couple of them died uh, by running through the stakes. The rest died by getting slaughtered by a spearman and axemen we have here. Have reached the walls. It is time for butcher's work. You have some uh, cataphract golems here on the right, possibly a leftover of a uh, heavy cataphract unit. And there are some mace men and so on. So, here we have a unit of Templar crossbowmen. They're trying to fire into uh, this large uh, congregation of Saracens in here. Unfortunately, they're also shooting at the backs of some of our own men. I could have uh, organized this battle better. I'm just so used to having catapults that I can't automatically arrange my units in a certain way. And in this case, we didn't have catapults. And so we should have relied more on missile units, on uh, our archers, on our crossbowmen, and we should have rearranged, or we should have arranged our units here better. So one enemy horseman got into the um, Citadel Plaza, but he was routed. Here we have a uh, heavy Ghulam unit uh, of the Turks. They're nearly broken through. Uh, we have more reserves, so we bring them uh, up slowly. Here are some uh, Crusader spearmen here in the foreground. This is a new model. It's possibly based on another mod, but it's fairly new. 
Let's see. You won't see it. I don't think it's from Broken Crescent, this, uh, this model. I don't think it's from anywhere. I think it's completely new. Uh, these uh, Templar 200 Axemen are from Broken Crescent. We have the shields here the backs with the upper half being black. The shields more look more like Teutonic Order shields. But they are Templar 200 Axemen. The enemy is badly they, have lost they are very good. Men. And uh, here the fighting continues. Now then, uh, some Saracen horsemen uh, manage to get through, but then they get routed. And it's amazing how they manage to get through all these spearmen, all these stakes, uh, the sharpened stakes. So back to this Templar 200 Axemen, they are very deadly. And so here it looks like we have temporarily uh, broken our enemy, so a lot of enemies are retreating, so we are reorganizing ourselves pushing closer to the gate. It almost looked like at one point the uh, Easterlings were going to break through. Easterlings, that's a, a nice word, that's uh, from uh, Tolkien, I think. These Eastern people, the desert people, the Cumans and the Islamic factions. So again we're rearranging our lines, the uh, the floor is strewn with the dead bodies of um, the soldiers of the two sides. I think there's a little bit of fighting on the walls, but nothing serious. The main fighting is here at the gate, and the first enemy general has been slain. It is the Kipchak general, the Cuman general has been slain. We have brought in uh, the Edesan Guard. They are a very good unit. Just as good as a Templar uh, 200 Axemen. And of course the um, St. Lazarus 200 Axemen are very good. All 200 Axemen are excellent units. By now we have lost both units of uh, the St. Lazarus Knights. In fact we've lost all our St. Lazarus Knights. And so that means we no longer have the uh, demoralizing effect that they produce on our enemy. So there are some Saracen swordsmen now, you can see them here. Um, this is one of uh, the prettiest units in uh, any medieval to Total War mod. Our Edison guards are taking no prisoners. We have also activated, of course, the uh, oil at the gate. So that's also affecting our enemy a lot. But we've lost a lot of units now, and so we're trying to move closer to the gate because we don't have enough men to form a nice kind of U shape or square shape. So we're moving closer to the door closer to the gate. Uh, now we're rearranging our units a little bit. Uh, it seems our enemy also is hesitating now. They've also suffered many casualties. And it seems there has been now a lull in the battle. Both sides are eyeing each other. One Gulum here has come closer to our lines and the fighting has resumed. There are some Turks now coming closer. There are some double-headed Axemen. There's uh, what seems to be a bodyguard unit now uh, entering uh, into the keep. You see they're entering very, very carefully. That's part of the um, Germanicus AI. So they don't charge and get killed by the sharpened stakes, but they enter very, very slowly. They try to outflank them. They see there's no possibility of outflanking uh, the defenders, and so they move out again rather slowly to avoid being killed by the sharpened stakes. They don't charge in. And so there is a terrible melee now here at the gate. There is a stalemate, uh, neither side is uh, making much progress. 
who could have routed our enemy knife with another catapults. The alternative would have been to open up on one side and uh, let uh, crossbowmen in the walls and archers to fire at the side of the enemy. We could have done that, I didn't do it, I'm sure we would have had lower casualties. Uh, I just always rely on having a catapult uh, when an enemy breaks through a gate. And it's very difficult, I just never was in a situation before where I have to defend a gate without catapults and I, I just have to rethink about how to do that. And you see here, uh, the ground is strewn with the dead. Uh, some of the uh, soldiers are up to their breasts and, uh, and the fallen bodies of their fallen comrades. It reminds me of a quote from one of the chronicles of the conquest of India that uh, the plains had been transformed into hills by the bodies of the dead that had piled up uh, during the battle. Enemy flees the battle. Run down those worthless peasants. So those uh, double-handed axemen are holding out very well, both the Templar ones and the Odessan guard. We killed another one of the enemy generals here. Are uh, again those uh, funny-looking uh, cannons of the Holy Sepulchre. We've killed uh, a third enemy general, I think. And it looks like now our line is going to hold. Uh, the enemy is sending in some small units piecemeal. And I think now we've got the upper hand. We've opened up a little bit on the right to avoid shooting at our men in the back. And now our crossbowmen are firing at anyone who dares to come through the gate. And so we are now holding the gate. And so I should have used this strategy earlier on. So we have crossbowmen on the walls, and if any Saracen unit tries to get through the gate, they are fired on their sides by the crossbowmen. Except, of course, if they're engaged in the melee, it's harder than to fight them. So our cannons on the Holy Sepulchre have come down here to help us out. The fighting on the wall is over. The enemy has brought in just a small unit of heavily armored spearmen and they are fighting uh, cannons of the Holy Sepulchre. The Holy Sepulchre was an important church in Jerusalem where Jesus Christ was supposed to have been born. And uh, so the cannons were sort of the guardians. And of course they were also ordained priests, I do believe. So it looks like the odds are even, uh, we've evened out the difference against our enemy. We're almost certainly going to win this battle, even though we have suffered tremendous losses. And so there's less than three minutes now left, the battle is almost over. I hope you liked it. One of the main features, I guess, in terms of unit look is that there is a lot more variety, many different uh, types of styles and units in uh, the historical improvement mode. A lot of them uh, have come from Broken Crescent. That's a compliment, although I didn't do any of those mods. There were most of them, many of them rather, not most of them, were done by Alpha Delta. He did 300 units in less than a year. Quite amazing. And then later mortars added more units into the Broken Crescent and some of these units have found their way into Titanium. Of course they have been very often remodeled. Here a Bedouin horseman tried to charge in, has been slain, stumbled into the shopping stakes. Same thing happens to those horsemen. And another enemy general has been slain. Here's uh, the Moor, Moorish general, Captain Tabit. Or oil uh, keeps uh, pouring down from the gate. And our enemy 
has given up, it seems. They lost their courage, they lost their determination, they lost their resolve. They're just standing by the gate and the two sides are eyeing each other, neither making a move. We're quite happy to shoot arrows and crossbow bolts into anyone who dares to come in through the gate. Less than 30 seconds left. The day has ended, and with it, all hopes for our enemy. We have vanquished our foe. C'est là une victoire. All Christendom will come to know. And so that was the battle. We lost a lot more men. We lost half our army. 461 men. A lot more men than in the previous battle. In the previous battle, we lost about 70 or 80. Uh, some units did okay, the St. Lazarus Knights killed about 80, the Cannons of the Holy Sepulchre killed over 100, similarly as in the previous battle. Uh, the enemy lost more men in the previous battle, 1900 dead and about 400 taken prisoner. And uh, the Odessan Guard did extremely well as well, 122 uh, killed. And so that was the end of this battle. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Thank you for watching.